Hare Krishna Jananda Maharaj, Radha Naswami Maharaj, we missed each other yesterday. Anyway, it wouldn't have happened. It was like, there were many people at Sundar Dandas as there are here. So, it wasn't, wasn't going to be a threesome. <laughs> Uh, yes, time is short, so I'll try to just uh, move things along. Jai Dasi Chaitanya Jaya Nityananda Jai Advaita Chandra Jaya Gaurabhakta Vrinda Hare Krishna Hare Krishna 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 Hare 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 Rama, Hare Rama, O Rama, Rama, Hare Hare. Okay, I'm. Uh, I selected a certain portion, which is the final portion of uh, Madhya Lila, and uh, in it, Kaviraj Goswami really gives us a wonderful analogy of Krishna's pastimes, Chaitanya Mahaprabhu's pastimes, uh, the relationship uh, between them. And uh, I was hoping we could get, get through that. And I also wanted to, uh, I guess, just read a portion of afterward of Chaitanya Charitamrita where Srila Prabhupada talks. Uh, Thanks, thanks his disciples, uh, and gives a short summary of his life, and then, and then let's see, let's see how we do. I just ask, uh, I will chant this together, and then maybe uh, one or two devotees but, uh, can chant the uh, chant the verse also. Jaili tam ritavini kaya yad. Whoops. How did we used to do these? Mm -hmm. I'll just uh, do phrase after phrase. Yelila Amrita Vini Kaya Yada Annapani Tabe Bhakti Radurbala Jivan Jarae Kabandupane Utpulita Tanumane Hashi Goya Korai Nartan Maharaj Another gentleman. Utpurita Tanumane Hase Gaya Kare Nartam. Two ladies would like to chant. I made it nice and big. I was thinking of 
my god sisters if any one of them want Vikram Dita Vine Karya Yadyana Pane Tari Bhakti Radura Rajivan Jaraya Kabindu Pane Utpulita Tanumane Asiga Okay, let's do the translation. Man becomes strong and stout by eating sufficient grains. But the devotee who simply eats ordinary grains but does not taste the transcendental pastimes of Lord Chaitanya Mahaprabhu and Krishna gradually becomes weak and falls down from the transcendental position. However, if one drinks but a drop of the nectar of Krishna's pastimes, his body and mind begins to bloom and he begins to laugh, sing and dance. Okay, let's do, uh, repeat that. Men become strong and stout, strong and stout. By, eating by eating sufficient grains. But the devotee who simply eats ordinary grains, but, eat ordinary but does not taste the transcendental pastimes of Lord Chaitanya Mahaprabhu and Krishna gradually becomes weak and falls down from the transcendental position. However, if one drinks but a drop of the nectar of Krishna's pastimes, his body and mind begin to bloom and he begins to laugh, sing, and dance. This is a, uh, a wonderful verse. We could just stick with that, but I'll see if uh, we can sort of go forward. Uh, and I will come, come to this verse as part of our reading. But, uh, but whoever is uh, working... Uh, the, then we come back to verse 268, I think. Is that what's on the board? Uh, all sane men. Is that it? All sane men? Yeah, okay. Nama Mishnu Biraya Krishna Krishna Bhutale Srimati Bhakti Granta Swami Riti Namine Namaste Sarasvati Devi Gauravani Pracharine Nirvisesha Srinivadi Prasad Chatei Svatari Jai Srila Prabhupada Ki Jai This portion of uh, Chaitanya Chaitamrita is the conclusion that Kaviraj gives uh, Kaviraj Goswami gives to his uh, Madhyalila and uh, as you know Chaitanya Chaitamrita is of three parts Ari Lila, Madhya Lila, Antya Lila. And uh, especially the Madhya Lila contains many of Chaitanya Mahaprabhu's preaching pastimes, traveling uh, throughout India, uh, which Srila Prabhupada says in the introduction to the Bhagavatam is the most important part of Chaitanya Mahaprabhu's pastimes. Anchalila then really uh, dwells into, delves into uh, the uh, ecstasies of Lord Chaitanya. And Adilila is basically a uh, philosophical uh, basis, foundation uh, for the truths of Krishna, Chaitanya Mahaprabhu, Lord Nityananda, Panchatattva, and then talks a little about uh, childhood pastimes. So, uh, when uh, let's all just uh, read this uh, verse together, and that's how we'll uh, continue going on. All sane men within no all together, so we save time. All sane men within these three worlds certainly accept the conclusion 
that no one is more merciful and magnanimous than Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu and don't, no one is as kind to his devotees. Uh, merciful and magnanimous. Uh, you know, when we talk about mercy, or we talk, talk about being magnanimous, uh, these actually have have their perfection uh, in uh, Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu. Uh, when someone is really suffering from something unpleasant, please do a sound check to determine that everyone can hear you. Okay, can everyone hear me? And back over there, yes, it's okay. Back over there, yes. Okay. Anyone can't? Thank you. Okay. Uh, that when someone's suffering from something unpleasant and we're, we get uh, relief, uh, someone is delivering us from an unpleasant situation, uh, then that is being merciful. And of course, here we are in the material world and we're really suffering. Now who's giving us relief? Uh, in this age, it's uh, Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu. But not only is he giving us relief, but mercy means that forgiving those persons who are suffering, because people, why do people suffer? Uh, they suffer due to sinful reaction. And one thing is to be freed from the suffering. The other thing is to also be forgiven. So being merciful uh, is that person, uh, is that activity uh, which uh, realizes uh, both of these things. And here Kaviraj Goswami is very much considering that he never met Lord Chaitanya, uh, is uh, very much a uh, proponent of absolute surrender, service to Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu. Uh, even if you have to choose between Chaitanya Mahaprabhu and Krishna, then you choose Chaitanya Mahaprabhu. And of course, the person who's really very extreme, you could say that Kaviraj Goswami is relatively moderate, is Prabodhananda Saraswati. Now that I mention his name, who knows? Raise your hands, who knows who Prabodhananda Saraswati Thakur is? Okay, this is about the same showing I got in uh, Mayapur with a lot more devotees, uh, sort of mind-boggling. But he's the uncle of Gopal Bhatta Goswami, and I won't ask you who, who knows who Gopal Bhatta Goswami is. And uh, he's mentioned in Chaitanya Charitamrita. And Who's read Chaitanya Charitamrita beginning to end? Okay, oh my God, but there's God sisters and everywhere else is moot. Okay, that's why we did the initial verse that we were quoting on. And uh, magnanimous, to be magnanimous means that you're very generous to someone who is of a much lower stature than yourself, who doesn't have a wealthy person, who just gives... Sarva, where's Bhagwat? Bhagwat's here? Oh, I'll see him later. No, it's a... Uh, I'll see him later on. Uh, he must be devotees who came from farthest away, coming all the way from Australia. Uh, magnanimous means uh, being specifically generous uh, to those who are less fortunate. And uh, we are definitely less fortunate. Uh, the whole uh, concept of Krishna Prema, what to speak of Krishna Prema, but both Krishna and Prema were unknown, unknowns, uh, at least uh, to me prior to coming in contact with Krishna consciousness. I did have, uh, I'll take your fingers out of her mouth. Don't put your finger in your mouth. Um, 
I did have one uh, one book. This was uh, a collection. I used to co- uh, b- purchase and collect a lot of books, and this was a four-set volume of the great literary works of uh, the world, and Bhagavad Gita was in there. Uh, and of course, you can imagine. I don't remember who it was, but it was just some some scholar, some person who had translated. Uh, and Krishna was called the deity. Anyway, that was the first time I came across Krishna. I was, I was really young, like maybe 11, 12 years old. But it didn't, didn't really spark anything until I met, uh, met the devotees. And here, uh, this other feature of Chaitanya Mahaprabhu, that no one is as kind to devotees as Lord Chaitanya is. Uh, throughout Chaitanya Charita, Amrita, Chaitanya Bhagavat, uh, we see Lord Chaitanya's uh, extraordinary uh, relationship to his devotee, for instance, uh, saying, unfortunately, I'm coming to the stage where I forget names uh, very, uh, very easily, Radhanath Maharaj will remind me, saying to uh, Srivananda Sin, Srivananda Sin, the chief on the scene can sell me anywhere in the marketplace. That's a far out statement that I belong to somebody and just like a certain commodity that you want to sell. So yeah, he can go and sell me uh, in, in the marketplace. I don't know if during Chaitanya Mahaprabhu's time there was slavery, but Prabhupada writes that in ancient days there was slavery, there was... Uh, human sacrifices and so on, which is a good thing that we're not going to get into. This is a real interesting part of the Bhagavatam about human sacrifice. So Chaitanya Mahaprabhu is just simply wonderful and uh, he is the God God that we uh, need. Uh, Burijan Prabhu. Uh, told me Prabhupada came to Hong Kong. Then uh, he said, when we have a temple here, we should install uh, Sadhbuj deities. No, oh, Prabhupada, why, why are we going to have Sadhbuj instead of Gornitai? He says, these people are so sinful, they need three gods to deliver them. <laughs> so Chaitanya Mahaprabhu, Lord Ramachandra, Lord Krishna, we need all three of them. So now we move to the next verse uh, and we read together. All devotees should hear about Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu's pastimes with faith and love. By the grace of the Lord, one can thus attain shelter at his lotus feet. So when you know that he's so magnanimous, when he's so merciful, when he's so kind to those people who in Kali Yuga somehow or another uh, came uh, to uh, his mission, uh, Lord Chaitanya was very kind, then that must awaken some faith, that must uh, stir some form of affection to Chaitanya Mahaprabhu. So here he says now, he's uh, giving a warning, you should listen very carefully to Chaitanya Mahaprabhu's pastimes. Uh, this is They're extremely important for Vaishnavas because, uh, you know, there's a common uh, thread between Chaitanya Mahaprabhu and Lord Krishna. Of course, Chaitanya Mahaprabhu is Krishna. But Krishna, especially Radha Krishna's pastimes, are extremely difficult to understand, to develop an attachment for. So the whole purpose of Chaitanya Charitamrita is, as Prabhupada often said, you have to go through Chaitanya Mahaprabhu to Krishna. And to get to Chaitanya Mahaprabhu, then you have to go through the Panchatattva, to go through the Panchatattva, Rupa Raghunatha Padehoi Vyakuti, then you go through Rupa and Raghunatha, and obviously you go through your Guru Parampara, and of course, we're going through Srila Prabhupada and whoever Srila Prabhupada's successors are. 
Yes. I won't get into that. So uh, it, it means that when we hear, there's a certain level of receptivity. There's love, there's faith, faith in Lord Chaitanya, at least some, some little sense uh, of these wonderful qualities. And then by hearing, we can attain shelter. So uh, the next verse uh, continues on uh, actually in this way. By understanding the pastimes of Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu, one can understand the truth about Krishna. By understanding Krishna, one can understand the limit of all knowledge described in various revealed scriptures. Uh, here's a short purport by Srila Prabhupada. As Lord Krishna states in the Bhagavad Gita 7.3, Manushyanam sahasya su kashid jyatati shidhaye jyatatam apishidhanam kashin maam veti tattvataha. Out of many thousands among men, one may endeavor for perfection, and out of those who have achieved perfection, hardly one knows me in truth. Srila Prabhupada continues, it's very difficult to understand Krishna. But if one tries to understand Srimad Bhagavatam through Chaitanya Mahaprabhu's bhakti cult, one will, understand, one will undoubtedly understand Krishna very easily. If somehow or another one understands Krishna, his life is successful. Again, as Krishna states in the Bhagavad Gita, Janma karma chame divyam evam jovati tattvataha. Chakta deham punar janma naiti maam eti sovarjuna. One who knows the transcendental nature of my appearance and activities does not, upon leaving the body, take his birth again in this material world, but attains my eternal abode, O Arjun. Uh, this idea of going through, I mean, it's not just a term or a way of uh, speaking. Uh, but literally here we see in uh, Chaitanya Charitamrita that Lord Chaitanya is absorbed in Krishna's pastimes. Uh, in Chaitanya Charitamrita, generally in Radha Krishna's pastimes, and in Chaitanya Bhagwat, in a general sense, uh, many of Krishna's pastimes, incarnations, and so on. So. When we hear about how Lord Chaitanya is absorbed uh, and is meditating upon, feeling ecstasy, uh, recipro reciprocating and responding uh, to the different verses that describe Krishna's pastimes, then we have a safe access. Uh, just like you have one pastime where Chaitanya Mahaprabhu uh, is uh, absorbed in, in his inner meditation, Lord Chaitanya has really three states of consciousness, inner, outer, and inner, outer, or in between. So sometimes when he's in inner consciousness, then he's oblivious to anything that's going on in the world. When he's in external consciousness, then that's when he's fully relating to his uh, associates, the circumstances going on around him, and Inner, outer, or external, internal is a sort of a, a blending of the two. Chaitanya Mahaprabhu is still very much relating, uh, uh, reminding or remembering uh, the pastime that he was in, in internal consciousness. But he's uh, at the same time uh, relating to the, his devotees about him and talking to them, but not in a fully uh, rational way. He does not really fully grasp who they are, where they are, where he is. Uh, he's, he's speaking. Uh, something akin to, for instance, an intoxicated uh, person. So when we read and when we hear Chaitanya Mahaprabhu remembering Krishna's pastimes, oh yes, in the pastime I was going to talk about, so Chaitanya Mahaprabhu uh, sort of speaks in his ecstasy, uh, in that intermediate uh, ecstasy, external, internal, 
And he says, I was on the bank of the Jamuna uh, along with Krishna and Radha and uh, so many gopis and Krishna and some of his uh, girlfriends went into the water and they had all kinds of water sports. This is one of uh, Krishna's uh, uh, special pastimes, water sport, splashing and so many things. And uh, Srila Prabhupada encouraged devotees to enjoy themselves uh, in the water. And uh, we were standing, he says, on the shore, and we were uh, watching. So this is a very, in one sense, confidential pastime. It's described in other literature, like Govinda Lila Mrita, uh, and so on, and Mahakavya. Uh, but uh, reading those, one should really have a uh, maturing or mature state of Krishna consciousness. But here, when you read the same, hear the same thing from Chaitanya Mahaprabhu, then, then you're safe uh, because you're hearing how Chaitanya Mahaprabhu is experiencing it, how Chaitanya Mahaprabhu is thinking and meditating uh, on that. So this limit of knowledge, well, what does it mean that when you know Krishna, uh, ultimately you attain the limit of knowledge? Uh, well, obviously, limit of knowledge includes things like Krishna Prema, the position of Krishna's eternal associates, the gift of being able to go back home, back to Godhead. Vedasya sarveraham eva vedyo vidanta krit veda eva chaha. So Krishna says, yes, by all the Vedas, I am to be known. Uh, no Krishna, as in this purport, Tattvataha, no Krishna in truth. Now we're going to the next verse, and uh, this starts off with a very extensive analogy, and we'll see how far we get in it. Now my apologies that uh, this is sort of a little lengthy uh, reading. Okay, we're on the next one, the, the pastimes of Lord Krishna, right? Pastimes of Lord Krishna are the essence of all nectar. And that nectar is flowing in hundreds of rivers in all directions. The pastimes of Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu are an eternal reservoir. And one is advised to let his mind swim like a swan on this transcendental lake. Now there's a longish purport, uh, which then I, I won't read. But you have to, uh, this imagery is very vivid, very beautiful, and Kaviraj Goswami uh, extends it more and more. So here we've got the rivers of Krishna's pastimes flowing in all different directions. There's a reservoir, which is actually uh, Gora Leela uh, and Krishna Leela. And uh, then uh, there's devotees who are like swans, uh, and uh, the minds of devotees who swim like swans on the lake. It's interesting that he said the minds of devotees, because mind is, uh, in the Gita, Krishna says uh, that bandhu uh, ripur atmanaha. He can, the mind can either be our bandhu, our friend, or it can be ripu, or it can be our enemy. So generally, uh, practicing devotees experience this animosity from the mind that keeps bringing up thoughts from this life, past lives, who knows. Uh, and it becomes a, a real obstacle in our moving forward. But uh, it's not something that you can void, just like some yoga practices, you know, you want to void your mind. Uh, we don't really want to void our mind because our mind is the instrument by which we're going to actually remember Krishna. The Satatam Kirtanam Vishnu. So if you're meant to be always remembering Krishna, then that has to be done with a mind, but it requires a pure mind, a mind that's cooperating. So Chaitu Dharpanam Arjanam, ultimately Chaita means to purify our mind. And, of course, 
this Krishna Leela, Chaitanya Mahaprabhu's uh, uh, reservoir and these pastimes of Krishna, they're just flowing in all different directions. They're flowing all over the world uh, so that uh, others can also get uh, that benefit. And the pastimes of Lord Chaitanya are reservoir. So Krishna's pastimes are flowing from this reservoir of Gaur's pastimes. Uh, and the devotees' minds, well, should be like swans, uh, who are on this transcendental lake. And I'll read a l little more about uh, what they do uh, on that uh, transcendental lake. Uh, it's Chaitanya Mahaprabhu who's actually making all of these rivers flow uh, in uh, different directions. And as we have said, the devotees drink Krishna Leela through Gaur Leela. That's why these two books uh, are so important, Chaitanya Charitamrita and Chaitanya Bhagwat. Uh, Bhaktisanta Saraswati Thakur did a uh, commentary on Chaitanya Bhagwat. Bhaktivinoda Thakur, Srila Prabhupada on Chaitanya Charitamrita. So then he goes to the next verse. With all humility, I submit myself to the lotus feet of all you devotees, taking the dust from your feet as my bodily ornaments. Now, my dear devotees, please hear one thing from me. It's interesting that before he continues, uh, that uh, Kaviraj Goswami then submits himself to his uh, listeners. This really uh, needs to be the mood or the proper attitude of, of a Vaishnav, of a uh, author. And over and over again he's saying, I'm taking the dust of the feet of my readers. Uh, obviously uh, he's not doing that literally because he has no specific aspect to all our uh, uh, contact to all of us to take the dust. But through the uh, media of uh, his words, uh, then he uh, places his feet, uh, uh, places his head on the lotus feet uh, of the uh, devotees. Which is interesting because here you have an eternally liberated soul and uh, he has this type of submissive attitude to Vaishnavas. Uh, the uh, beautiful relationship of how Vaishnavas should relate to each other uh, it really sings loud and clear in Chaitanya Charitamrita. Devotees have such a uh, such an extraordinary loving uh, relationship which is uh, of course characteristic of Madhyam Adhikaris and what to speak of Uttama Adhikaris. Uh, the tendency sometimes in, with Kanishta Adhikaris is not Tachanya Shu Bhakti Shu. That they don't really know how to recognize, relate uh, with uh, other Vaishnavas. And uh, as a result, Yadi uh, Vaishnava Aparade Uti Hati Mata. That as a result of that, uh, if one commits offenses at the feet of Vaishnavas, then things become extremely. Uh, chaotic. Our uh, social media platforms, internet and so on are really extraordinarily good media for criticizing everybody else in the world, which is not a good, not a good thing. But leave that uh, to uh, another time. So this is, this is how Vaishnavas actually approach other Vaishnavas. And then we continue. Devotional service to Krishna is exactly like a pleasing, jubilant forest of lotus flowers, wherein there is ample honey. I request everyone to taste this honey. If all the mental speculators, being the bees of their minds, into this forest of lotus flowers and jubilantly enjoy ecstatic love of Krishna day and night, their mental speculation will be completely transcendentally satisfied. And uh, 
I don't know if you've noticed in Srila Prabhupada's books that uh, Prabhupada really likes this word jubilant. Uh, it wasn't something that I'd heard before coming to Krishna consciousness, but it's in the dictionary, uh, and there is a, a proper def- definition. So here he's continuing this uh, uh, analogy. He says that bhakti is like a forest of lotus flowers. And, of course, in the lotus flowers, uh, there's so much honey flowing from there. So the author is requesting everyone to taste this honey. And specifically, he's pointing to mental speculators, and their minds are like bees uh, who are drinking the honey from the lotus flowers. So but in that way, they can actually, he says, he, uh, excuse me, uh, bring the bees of their minds into this forest of lotus flowers and jubilantly enjoy ecstatic love of Krishna day and night. Then their mental speculation will be completely satisfied. Um, I, I guess the author is speaking about quite advanced ganis who are already purified at heart, uh, something of the uh, state of, for instance, uh, the Kumaras, and uh, when they hear Chaitanya Mahaprabhu's uh, uh, Leela, then uh, ecstatic love means that they immediately enter onto the transcendental platform, into the platform of ecstatic love. Uh, so, uh, yes, in a devotional service like a, a forest of lotus flowers. So, devotion has many angas. Uh, we have nine different uh, angas as mentioned, or limbs mentioned by Prahlad Maharaj. And uh, they also have various subdivisions. So you could just imagine that these different types of uh, limbs of devotion, uh, they are represented uh, by the uh, different lotuses. And that these ganis, they come and they drink the nectar uh, of different devotional activities uh, to Krishna. Shravanam, Kirtanam, Vishnu, Smaranam, Padapsevanam, Archanam, and so on. So when you perform these devotional activities uh, with uh, real faith, uh, then the end result will be uh, is that if it happens to the Ganis, it will certainly happen to devotees. Here he uses this term devotee uh, and uh, obviously seeming to mean different levels of devotees or different types of devotees but particularly the practicing devotees, the sadhaka devotees, uh, such as us. And uh, that way, speculators are always trying to understand, uh, want to understand the absolute truth by my own, the strength of my own uh, mental speculation, my mind. How can I actually figure everything out? And of course, you can't figure everything out. But when you hear about Krishna's pastimes, then everything becomes very, very clear. Should become very clear. You know, Thakur Bhaktivinod, when he, uh, in his Leela, although Bhaktivinod Thakur is also an eternally liberated soul, when he first uh, read Srimad Bhagavatam, he, he just couldn't relate to Krishna's pastimes with the gopis, this concept of God not being, you know, not following the laws of morality didn't uh, click with him. And then after he read Chaitanya Charitamrita, so there he could very easily accept Chaitanya Mahaprabhu as the Supreme Personality of Godhead. And then by also hearing of Chaitanya Mahaprabhu's tasting Krishna Leela, and specifically those Krishna Lila that he had questions about, doubts about, uh, then uh, everything fell into place. Yes. Okay, we're on the next one. The devotees who have a relationship with Krishna are like swans, (coughs) chakravaka birds, who play in that forest of lotus flowers. The buds of those lotus flowers are the pastimes of Krishna, 
and they are edibles for the swan-like devotees. Lord Sri Krishna is always engaged in his transcendental pastimes. Therefore, the devotees following in the footsteps of Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu can always eat those lotus buds, for they are the pastimes of the Lord. Hmm. So, before we had ganis as being bees. Now, we've got devotees, and they're swans and chakravakas. So, in terms of uh, evolutionary comparison, uh, insect and bird, the birds are in a much higher state. So, similarly, a swan is a much uh, more elegant, uh, although not necessarily uh, safe animal as a bee. Bees tends to sting you. I remember a long time ago in Chaitanya College, there was this huge, huge snowstorm. And uh, I found this uh, swan, big swan, uh, in, uh, in the back field. And uh, myself and uh, uh, Kirtiraj, myself and Kirtiraj went out. He wasn't, although he was almost half frozen to death, and later on he actually did pass away. He attacked us, hissing and everything. He was huge. So, but anyway, swans, bees, but still swans are in a different category. So devotees are swans and ganis are uh, bees. And the, uh, they're eating the, uh, here he's saying, that they're eating the buds. Those buds of the lotus flowers are the pastimes of Krishna, and they are edibles for the swan-like devotees. So bees are only taking the honey, but the swans are taking everything. They're taking the buds, they're eating the whole buds. I've never eaten the bud of a lotus flower. I eat the seeds. Uh, they're very, really nice, or stem, but not the buds. But that also includes honey. So it becomes obviously a superior uh, taste. And uh, those pastimes are uh, of Lord Krishna, which are very, very sweet. It's a very uh, elaborate description of what actually real sweetness means. Uh, in one sense, sweetness means extraordinary, undescribable beauty. Uh, in another sense, uh, it also refers to just very uh, charming, attractive, human-like pastimes. Uh, Lord Narayan, his sweetness is always mixed to a certain degree uh, with uh, the awe and reverence that everyone has for him. And that checks that type of re uh, relationship. But Krishna, especially and it was a constant, uh, constant thing that one, one can observe that the devotees from the Indian community, when they always inherit a little Bala Gopal, because I mean, people consider that's the sweetest. Here's Krishna, and he's pinching other children, and he's passing stool and urine. It's an inconceivable thing to people whose God is passing stool and urine on. Uh, on the beautiful marble floor, stealing all kinds of milk products. These things are really extraordinary, attractive. They really draw the heart. It's something that you can really relate to. Uh, I don't know if you stole uh, milk products. Uh, I stole chocolate, but I don't stole milk products. Uh, didn't have to steal them. You're allowed to drink whatever milk uh, that you wanted. But yes, uh, milk, makan, and so on. That was one of my first turning points with Krishna consciousness. I used to always love eating just bread and butter. And when I heard this thing that God steals butter, I said, this is the right God. This is the God for me, someone who's really into butter. Uh, so these things are very, very attractive. Uh, and so the bud in that sense, uh, because it not only 
Well, the bud is better than the open lotus. Why is the bud better than the open lotus? Because there's only one way for the open lotus to go, and that is that it dies. Uh, but the bud still has yes to open. Of course, it's not going to open in the stomachs of devotees, uh, but it's a uh, wonderfully attractive uh, form uh, of the uh, lotus. Um, we go to the next verse. All the devotees of Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu should go to that lake and remaining always under the shelter of the lotus feet of Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu become swans and chakravaka birds in those celestial waters. They should go on rendering service to Lord Krishna and enjoy life perpetually. In this way all miseries will be diminished. The devotees will attain great happiness and there will be jubilant love of God. Jubilant love of God. Uh, okay, before we're talking about the forest of lotus flowers. Now there are, I've never seen, but there are land lotuses. Uh, perhaps devotees who lived in India. You've seen Maharaj, or not Maharaj? Land lotuses that grow. I, I've never seen land lotuses. Stala Kamalini. It's called Stala Kamalini Yukta Garvite Skin. So, land lotus. Uh, and uh, it's a terminology that's used uh, quite often. Uh, so, from the land lotuses, now we're going to the more commonly encountered lotuses, which are the lotuses uh, in the uh, water. And the devotees should go to that. Now, remember, we talked about the reservoir. So, He's now speaking that the devotees who are like Chakravaka birds, swans, the swans should go to the lake, uh, which is the reservoir of Krishna's Leela and Gaur Leela, and stay there under the shelter of Chaitanya Mahaprabhu. So uh, here it seems that Kaviraj Goswami is speaking about the practicing devotees, sadhakas, us. Uh, I say that because he says that uh, in this way all miseries will be diminished. The pure devotees don't have any miseries. Uh, it's devotees who still are struggling with the modes of material nature who suffer. Uh, otherwise, uh, other devotees, advanced devotees, don't. So all miseries will be diminished and the devotees will attain great happiness. So we should stay under the shelter of Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu, which means just always think of uh, Lord Chaitanya. Bajagauranga, Kahagauranga, Lahagauranga Namari. So these are Lord Nityananda's words. Bajagauranga, worship Chaitanya Mahaprabhu, Kahagauranga, Lahagauranga Namari. So we should remember him, we should worship him, we should chant his names, uh, and uh, in that way, uh, will be very happy. And we'll go to the next verse. The devotees who have taken shelter of the lotus feet of Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu take the responsibility for distributing nectarian devotional service all over the world. They are like the clouds pouring water on the ground that nourishes the fruit of love of Godhead in this world. The devotees eat that fruit to their heart's content and whatever remnants they leave are eaten by the general populace. Thus they live happily. Kavarat Goswami is like in his 80s or maybe even more and uh, he's uh, frail, he's invalid, uh, he's uh, living in Radhakund and at that time, there were very few devotees in Radha Kund. But now he's talking about spreading Krishna consciousness all over the world, distributing. And he's saying that the devotees who've taken shelter, they take responsibility. So now that refers to us. We were talking earlier about the practicing devotees and, of course, the perfected devotees also. They take responsibility for spreading Krishna consciousness all over the world. And how do they do that? Well, maybe swans can fly a certain distance, but I don't know if you've ever seen this uh, migration of swans 
who fly from one end of the, from uh, across the Himalayas. It's phenomenal. What to speak of the photography, how they could actually photograph such a thing. And they're flying at this very, very, I mean, they're flying above the mountains. So swans can fly a certain distance, but clouds, clouds really go a long way. Now the devotees uh, transform themselves into clouds, and the clouds have the nectar of the lake of Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu's pastimes and Krishna's pastimes, and they shower that uh, all over the world. So preachers are like that. Uh, they're uh, clouds. And uh, there's this new concept of fruit comes here. Up now we're talking about lotuses and buds and so on. And there's the fruit of uh, prema. Uh, and it seems that Kaviraj Goswami is equating. He's saying that uh, by preaching or spreading Krishna consciousness, what devotees actually relish prema. To one degree or another, that uh, everyone has that experience when you're speaking about Krishna, when you're distributing prasadam, uh, when you're uh, distributing Srila Prabhupada's books or doing Harinam, there's this extraordinary feeling. And he says that extraordinary feeling is prema, is love for Krishna. And by speaking and distributing, it's interesting, he says that actually the primary enjoyers are the devotees themselves, the preachers, and then the secondary are those who actually get the remnants, whatever it is that they uh, give to them. Okay, we go on to the next one, and we're coming right to the end. The pastimes of Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu are full of nectar, and the pastimes of Lord Krishna are like camphor. When one mixes these, they taste very sweet. By the mercy of the pure devotees, whoever tastes them can understand the depths of that sweetness. I, I touched about that uh, sweetness. Gaur Leela uh, it seems to be the main, because you're talking about here's the nectar, and Krishna's pastimes are the camphor, so it's just the additive uh, that's coming. Uh, and the depths of uh, sweetness. All of these verses deserve such a uh, nice treatment. Then we come back to our verse again. Men become strong and stout by eating sufficient grains, but the devotee who simply eats ordinary grains but does not taste the transcendental pastimes, Lord Chaitanya Mahaprabhu and Krishna gradually become weak and falls down from the transcendental position. However, if one drinks but a drop of nectar of Krishna's pastimes, his body and mind begin to bloom, and he begins to laugh, sing, and dance. Short purport. All the devotees connected with the Krishna consciousness movement, the interesting Prabhupada uses this word connected, He's not talking about devotees living in the temple. He's talking about anyone who's connected to the Krishna consciousness movement. Must read all the books that have been translated. Chaitanya Charitamrita, Srimad Bhagavatam, Bhagavad Gita, and others, which is really nectar of devotion. Otherwise, after some time, they will simply eat, sleep, and fall down from their position Thus, they will miss the opportunity to attain an eternal, blissful life of transcendental pleasure. Uh, my general experience, which is not that limited, uh, is that uh, devotees connected with the Krishna consciousness movement do not read all the books. Who's read all of Srimad Bhagavatam? A little better than CC, but uh, in the low 20s percentage of the devotees here. Who's read Bhagavad Gita? A little more, but not everybody. Who's read uh, Nectar of Devotion? Okay. I say shame on you for the people who didn't raise their hands. 
Srila uh, Prabhupada, this was his mission. He, you see the, those pictures of Prabhupada laying uh, on his deathbed uh, and translating Srimad Bhagavatam. This was like Prabhupada's gift. Four books. And you've all been to school. Will you tell me, how many books have you read? Grade school, high school, college, university, hundreds. Uh, I read hundreds before I found out that they're all a waste of time. We read hundreds of books. Here's four books, just four. And by that four, then we can understand what is actually Krishna consciousness and what it means to go back home, back to Godhead. It isn't, it isn't a given. It's a given if we do what Srila Prabhupada said. And really, that's what Bhaktivedanta Manor is about. It's a place where devotees can actually understand the science of Krishna consciousness. Uh, Srila Prabhupada was talking to the BBC up in his room. He said, we, we are an educational institution. So we're just here to educate our devotees. And what are the texts? Just these. There are hundreds, thousands of other books uh, in our Gaudiya Sampradaya. That's all right. If you can't read them, it's not a problem. But at least these four you must read. Uh, and we must sort of organize our lives. Uh, at least if we're going to be connected with the Krishna consciousness movement, uh, where we are reading, and not just reading, but studying, Nectar of Devotion, Prabhupada said, memorize it. You can't really do anything else. It's just so technical and so detailed. You really have to just go through step by step by step. And here it says, fall down. You may not end up being some materialist out on the street, I don't know, downtown London, uh, sleeping in a sleeping bag uh, on the sidewalk. Uh, that may not be the fate, but... Fall down may also mean that we just don't achieve that destination which is available to us. Systematic reading and studying Srila Prabhupada's books, that's our business. We go on to the next verse. The reader should relish this wonderful nectar because nothing compares to it. Keeping their faith firmly, it's not there? There? The reader should relish this wonderful nectar because nothing compares to it. Keeping their faith firmly fixed within their minds, they should be careful not to fall into the pit of false arguments or the whirlpools of unfortunate situations. If one falls into such positions, he is finished. It's really wonderful. We know the experience of so many whirlpools and... Uh, uh, false uh, pits of false arguments. Just read, accept, uh, and uh, ultimately uh, everything will gradually become revealed. Uh, and uh, the next verse. In conclusion, I submit to Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu, Nityananda Prabhu, Advaita Prabhu, and all the other devotees and readers that I accept your lotus feet as the helmet on my head. In this way, all my purposes will be served. Next verse. Taking the feet of Sri Rup Goswami, Sri Sanatana Goswami, Raghunath Das Goswami, Raghunath Bhat Goswami, and Jiva Goswami on my head, I always desire their mercy. Thus, I, Krishna Das, humbly try to describe the nectar of the pastimes of Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu, which are mixed with the pastimes of Lord Krishna. So, Panchatattva first, then comes six Goswamis, and the next verse. For the sake of Sri Madan Gopal and Govinda Dev, we pray that this book, Sri Chaitanya Charitamrita, may be offered to Sri Krishna Chaitanya Mahaprabhu. And last verse. Chaitanya Charitamrita pastimes of Lord Sri Krishna constitute a very secret literature. It is the life and soul of all devotees. 
those who are not fit to relish this literature, who are envious like hogs and pigs, will certainly not adore it. However, this will not harm my attempt. These pastimes of Lord Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu will certainly please all saintly people who have clear hearts. They will certainly enjoy it. We wish that this will enhance their enjoyment more and more. Thus end the Bhaktivedanta purports of Sri Chaitanya Charitamrita Madhyalila, 25th chapter, describing how the inhabitants of Varanasi were converted to Vaishnavism. And before you go, let me just... Uh, so a very secret science. We're privileged to this uh, very secret uh, knowledge. Don't, uh, don't take it for granted. Uh, take it very seriously. This other verse that we had uh, about uh, people being stout and strong. Spiritually, we mature and advance uh, by chanting Hare Krishna nicely and reading Srila Prabhupada's books. Those two things go together. Uh, now I'm just going to read, because you don't see this, I'm just going to read five lines. And then Hare Krishna, everyone's uh, off to Prasadam. Uh, this is the end, the last paragraph that Srila Prabhupada wrote uh, to his afterword of Chaitanya Charitamrita. He said, on this occasion, therefore, I request my disciples who are determined to help me in this work to continue their cooperation fully so that philosophers, scholars, religionists, and people in general all over the world will benefit by reading our transcendental literatures such as Srimad Bhagavatam and Sri Chaitanya Charitamrita. So Srila Prabhupada concludes uh, this book by... Uh, with a request, a request to his disciples, a request to his followers. So number one, help me. It's, you know, when someone's calling out to you, oh, please help me, help me. And you, you become very compassionate on that person. You respond. And Srila Prabhupada here is saying, please help me. So there are other times when Srila Prabhupada actually verbally said that. So I ask you, help me. Uh, distribute books, distribute books, distribute books. I request my disciples who are determined to help me, meaning that, anyway, some people may not be determined to help Srila Prabhupada, but some are. Uh, this sort of reunion, especially next weekend, uh, is uh, about Srila Prabhupada's disciples, and you're all here next generation, generation after that. Uh, it was a different world at that time. There was, there was just determination to help Srila Prabhupada uh, and we really didn't know anything else. And we took very seriously, uh, continue our cooperation. Uh, that didn't always work so that people in general all over the world can benefit from Srila Prabhupada's literatures. Uh, Jagadish uh, Prabhu uh, once sort of wrote a appreciation of that verse and uh, saying that this actually talks about uh, Srila Prabhupada, even if not perfectly composed, namely Srimad Bhagavatam and Srila Prabhupada's uh, Bhagavatam in the very beginning was not, uh, not really edited and it was based on Srila Prabhupada's uh, English which sometimes was very unique to him and then sometimes a little different cult to understand. So yes, but it will bring about a revolution. Uh, you have to have faith in that revolution. We, uh, we really had uh, faith. In fact, sometimes it seemed uh, we were too faithful. We thought that uh, it was happening tomorrow, that we were taking over the world. Uh, but uh, by distributing, by reading Srila Prabhupada's books and then distributing them, uh, uh, then 
uh, there will be a real change uh, in the world that we live in, which is really a horrible place, much worse a place than when I was age of this little girl. Uh, it, people were a little more sane at that time. And even when they were insane, it was a little more civilized than at the present. So thank you all very much. Um, my apologies that we went a little over time. And uh, wish everybody wonderful celebrations. Uh, Srila Prabhupada's grander and exceptional achievements and our Bhaktivedanta Manor along with its Haveli. Thank you all very much. Srila Prabhupada Ki Jai.